Chapter 4, The Movement, A Short History. A vast organizational network today, the New Age Movement, received its, received its modern start in 1875 with the founding of the Theosophical Society by Helena Petrovna Blavatsky. A basic teaching of this organization was that all world religions had common truths that transcended potential differences. Strongly propounding the theory of evolution, they also believed in the existence of masters who were either spirit beings or fortunate men more highly evolved than the common herd. This was a doctrine which was to have a substantial impact on the development of Hitler Hayes Nazism <clears throat> several decades later. Madame Blavatsky worked in telepathic communication serving as a fulcrum for the master start, starting in 1867 and continuing until her death in 1891. Achieving illumination or enlightenment was one of the theosophist's goals, and that means more than mere light bulbs to, the least one of, to at least one of their more famous initiates, Thomas Elva Edison, who joined the organization and signed its Pledge of Secrecy in 1878. Yes, Thomas Edison, New Ager. Through the Theosophical Society, the budding movement demonstrated hostility to Christianity from its beginning in 1875. Helena Blavatsky, in 1875, Helena Blavatsky wrote in her scrapbook, the true Christians and scientists must be made to respect their Indian betters. The wisdom of India, her philosophy and achievement, must be made known in Europe and America, and the English to be made to respect the natives of India and Tibet more than they do. From Buddhist high priest Mohatawat Gyanana to Prince Emil of Wittgenstein, from General Abner Doubleday, the founder of baseball, to Swami Saraswati, the famous of East and West, did not did meet in a concerted effort to eliminate Orthodox Christianity. In fact, many Theosophists intended to eliminate all Christianity, Orthodox and otherwise. When two Theosophists attempted to institute a branch of Theosophy known as Esoteric Christianity, that would be a rival of Gnostic Christian teachings along the line of the Kabbalah, a form of Christianity that is Christian in name only. They quickly found opposition from the remainder of the society. An attempt was made to resolve the dispute by chartering a special branch to be known as the Hermetic Lodge. However, the esophical hatred of Christianity was so strong that even such a watered-down, hereticized version could not survive within the organization. A Theosophical Society brochure made clear the anti-Christian aims of that movement. Quote, To oppose the materialism of science and every form of dogmatic theology, especially the Christian, which the chiefs of the society regard as particularly pernicious, to make known among Western nations, the long-suppressed facts about Oriental religious philosophies, their ethics, chronology, esotericism, symbolism, to counteract as far as possible the efforts of missionaries to delude the so-called heathen and pagans as to their, their real origin and dogmas of Christianity, and the practical effects of the latter upon public and private character in so-called Christian countries." Unquote. As a matter of fact, it saw unity between all religions except those monotheistic religions worshipping the Lord of hosts. Esoteric philosophy reconciles all nations, strips every one of its outward human garments, and shows the root of each to be identical with that of every other great religion. It proves the necessity of a divine absolute principle in nature. It denies deity no more than it does the sun. Esoteric philosophy has never rejected God in nature, nor deity as the absolute and abstract ends. It only refuses to accept any of the gods of the so-called monotheistic religions, gods created by man in his own image and likeness, a blasphemous and sorry caricature 
of the ever unknowable, unquote. This is an attitude that continues to prevail through the New Age movement. Everything is good except orthodox monotheistic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Proudly drawing their inspiration from spirits or elementals, the leaders of the Theosophical Society believe they were under the direct supervision of adepts and initiates belonging to a branch of the Great White Brotherhood. Following written orders from these spirit beings, the New York-based leadership moved to India in 1875. Another order from these demonic messengers told them to keep the society and teachings secret, at least for the time being. This was a dictum that was to prevail for a hundred years, until 1975, the year initiates were at last permitted to make the initiatory teachings public. After the secrecy order came down, the society began to communicate by secret signs and words of recognition. This practice continues today within the modern New Age movement. It is specifically designed to keep information from hostile investigators. Freely acknowledging their demonic origins, the organizations called one of its publications Lucifer for many years. For all their zeal in stamping out Christianity for the sake of religious freedom, the early movement had no such qualms about stamping their own brand of religious interference upon the unsuspecting Indian population. For both H.P.B., that's Blavatsky, and Colonel Alcott, I'm sorry, this is a quote, for both H.P.B., that's Blavatsky, and Colonel Alcott saw that theosophy would become a power to reorganize India's life on national lines once again, if only Indians accepted as a practical code of life, theosophy in its entirety. A psychic phenomenon phenomena and seemingly miraculous signs also characterized the early days of the society. These included precipitating of letters, materializations of objects, and production of strange sounds. Those allegedly producing the phenomena, which opponents of the society decried as fraud, were said to be in Tibet, whereas the phenomena itself appeared in India and Europe. An important addition was made to the society when Helena Petrovna Blavatsky met an English clergyman named C. W. Ledbetter. To his surprise, he received two letters signed Master K. H., that's Kut Humi, instructing him to leave immediately for India to assist the theosophists there. These letters arrived the same day that Madame Blavatsky was leaving England for a return trip to India. Disregarding biblical warnings about those in the last days departing from the truth to follow the doctrines of seducing spirits and devils, the clergyman quickly renounced the faith of his fathers to go serve the masters. During these activities, Madame Blavatsky composed Isis Unveiled and the Secret Doctrine under the direction of the masters. Although the books possessed I mean, possess a scholarly appearance, they are in fact entirely the product of automatic, that means demon manipulated, automatic writing. After Helena Blavatsky's death, the organization continued to prosper under the direction of Annie Besant, that is, until they made an abortive attempt to bring forth the Antichrist. Their candidate, they meticulously prepared for the job, backed out on them. In, in 1929, Krishna Murti dissolved the accompanying order of the star, consisting of his worldwide supporters. Perhaps some of the credit for the refusal might be attributed to his father, who fought Annie Besant and the Theosophical Society tooth and nail in an unsuccessful legal attempt to recover the children he had lost by the Theosophical trickery. The blow to the theosophists was enormous, for no, for no expense had been spared in grooming Krishnamurti for the job. Sorbonne educated and genteel in appearance, he was an individual with the necessary presence to make the desired worldwide impact. The disgruntled masters decided to pass the torch to another less rash than Annie Besant. It went to former Christian teacher 
and former wife of an Episcopal rector named Alice Ann Bailey. Born to position and beauty in England, she spent part of her childhood in Montreal, where her father was employed as an engineer. Both parents died while Alice and her sister were ch still children. Raised by other relatives, their treatment was not unkind and they were well provided for during their minority. Alice El evidently felt inferior to her sister, a beautiful and brilliant physician. If her autobiography is to be believed, she already had contact with a master while still in her teens, an experience she did not understand until much later. For a period of her life, she aspired to Christian service and spent time in India for this purpose. Oh, it's so sad. She married outside her own social class, however. The class difference had been provided for the, un for the usual mode of raising a prospective husband's status. He went to America to study for the Episcopal rectorhood, and Alice joined him there. Since Episcopalians and Anglicans were considered equal in the eyes of British social and religious society, this technically made the marriage consistent with her own class. It was not a happy marriage for Alice. Her husband had only one major vice, wife beating. After several children and several severe beatings, which Alice tried to hide to protect his ministry, the estrangement finally was permanent. During her separation, she resided in California and supported her growing family by working in a fish cannery. Hearing of two women in town who were English and of her same social class, Alice attempted to make their acquaintance. They were theosophists and encouraged Alice to join their ranks. Hungry for companionship, she attended their meetings. The exotic teachings must have added interest to her monotonous life as a fish canner. After a monthly stipend began coming from her husband, Walter, she was fi financially free to quit the cannery and devote her time to her children and esoteric philosophy. The masters had found another chosen vehicle to preserve their teachings and do their work. Recruiting as usual from the confused, the lonely, and those in despair, they found a woman with all three symptoms mentally ready to do their bidding. As a result, her sister, a successful physician and devout Christian, broke all contact with Alice and never spoke to her for the remainder of her life. Since the Masters had convinced Alice of the possibility of reincarnation, she took the break with her sister in stride, thinking she would reestablish contact in her next life. Later in life, Alice married Foster Bailey. The Baileys did more than anyone, except perhaps Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, to build the foundations for the new age. Alice wrote nearly two dozen books laying out the specific instructions for disciples of the Masters in the latter part of the 20th century, our present time. Like Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, from that point forward in her life, Alice showed tenacious hatred for Orthodox Christianity and fierce loyalty to the cause of occultism and Eastern mysticism. Although she continued to label herself a Christian, an examination of her writings shows that she attached an entirely different meaning to the word than do Orthodox believers. She taught the divinity of man and reincarnation as well as an attack on God's word, the standard lies of the serpent of the Garden of, of Eden days. Her work was immense. She organized the Arcane School, the new group of world servers, triangles, world goodwill, and assisted with a host of other foundational activities to help build the new age. Lucifer Publishing Company was established in 1922 to help disseminate her works. The name was changed the next year to Lucius Publishing Company for reasons unknown. Maybe he wanted to use his nickname. Yeah. That's funny. Her work was much more low profile and cautious than that of flamboyant Annie Besant, who had helped precipitate the Krishnamurti embarrassment for the masters. She concentrated on giving disciples directions for networking and infiltration. For networking and infiltration. Time frames were established by the masters. Work was to remain low key pro low profile until 1975, when the hitherto secret teachings about the New Age Christ and hierarchy could be publicly disseminated by all available media. 
I'm going to pause again. If you're only listening to this um, and you haven't heard my other videos, I apologize. Um, I have covered this before. The um, Alice said, she quote, a quote of hers is that in 50 years time, and she was talking, there, there would be many psychic mediums and people like um, Helena Blavatsky in 50 years time, which she said in 1925. So and then 50 years later in 1975, you know, this happens. And it's also when the um, Seven Mount Mandate happened, which I believe is exactly what I just said, um, networking and infiltration. That is what the, at new, the uh, Seven Mount Mandate is all about. It's about networking and infiltration. And infl it, it's the same thing. I'm just saying. I'm sorry. Back to the story. Okay. These teachings omitted little or nothing. They ranged from the attitude of the hierarchy towards Jews, which was negative, through dietary advice. Step by step, they plotted the coming new age with instructions for the institution of the necessary new world order through the use of identifying rainbows. Plans for religious war, forced redistribution of the world's resources, Luciferic initiations, mass planetary initiations, theology for the new world religion, disarmament campaign, and elimination or sealing away of obstinate religious orthodoxies all were covered extensively in the Alice Bailey writings. Even the sacredness of the number of the beast 666 was covered in at least two places. Wow. She discounted the possibility that the movement might be embarrassed by these books falling into the wrong hands. Alice was confident that they would be incomprehensible to anyone but an initiate. Had she been more familiar with the scriptures, she would have realized the folly of this position. Quote, Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Unquote. Daniel 12.10 Comparing the Bailey teachings with the state of the movement and its constituent organizations, it is clear that her instructions have been followed meticulously. Her disciples are now on the last stages of the New Age scheme to take the world for Lucifer. The year 1962 was another landmark year, for that was when the Scottish community of Findhorn, the Vatican City of the New Age movement, was founded. The life work of Peter and Eileen Caddy and their friend Dorothy McLean. The role of Findhorn was to help anchor the plan on earth, the capital P plan. Again their work was performed by following meticulously the Bailey writings and guidance Eileen was receiving from spirit beings and what she calls the voice of God. Findhorn received an important new member in 1970, David Spangler. Although many young people showed up daily at Findhorn, none received quite the royal welcome as did Spangler. Eileen Caddy had received guidance that David had the Christ energies. Ooh. Therefore, upon his arrival at Findhorn with his spiritual advisor, ex-Mormon, hmm, ex-Mormon Myrtle Glines, he was immediately inaugurated as the co-director of the Findhorn Foundation, where he was to remain for the next three years. Spangler went on. Spangler went into frequent transmission from demonic beings, including Maitreya, Rakozi, and many others. Esoteric lore from Tibetan Buddhism through UFOlogy was actively pursued by the Findhorn initiates and would-be initiates. Clergy ranging from Episcopal priests through Methodist ministers and others came to Finehorn to lend their input and visitors. And a few years later, the entire listening world that the true light of Finehorn was the light of Lucifer. At the same time Finehorn was blossoming, esoteric groups around the world commenced their networking operations, serving as a focal point for the plan. Findhorn itself attracted visitors and residents from a worldwide base. Its residents meticulously studied the mastered 
and mastered the works of Alice A. Bailey, Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, Agni Yoga, and a host of other esoteric saints and societies. David Spangler wrote a book which, he, which purported to be a transmission from unearthly sources or his higher self. Revelation, the birth of a new age, quickly became mandatory reading for Findhorn residents along with the Blavatsky Bailey works. Networking efforts ranged from Amnesty International, New Age Brain Trust of Lucius Trust, and the Stanford Research Institute of Palo Alto, California. SRI itself proclaimed the inviolability of spiritual forces on its public lobby walls. Well, Linkages were formed in the International Cooperation Council. This 200-plus organizational network of networks is dedicated to the speedy implementation of the plan, a plan which includes the bringing in of a New Age Christ. In 1973, David Spangler and other Findhornites left for the USA to, for to form the Lorian Association. This was another planetary network designed to publicize the spiritual goals of the coming new age. Lorian Association is presently headquartered in Madison, Wisconsin. Spangler also calls Findhorn his home. Similar to many dedicated New Agers, Spangler hails from a family which includes devout Christians. Jesus foresaw this division of earthly families. Think not that I am come to send peace on the earth. I came not to bring peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Matthew 10, 34-38, KJV. The year 1975 was a banner year for the New Age movement. That was when its disciples had permission from the deceased Alice Bailey to come out of the closet and spread the New Age message to the world with some French thing. Um, <laughs> sorry. With they did go public. Joie de vivre. Spangler, Mark Staten, and a host of other New Age personages and organizations launched their public work. It is interesting to note that Marilyn Ferguson also began publishing her Brain Mind Bulletin in 1975. From 1975 through and including the present time, the propaganda networking has coincided with other planning and organizational efforts. One important paramilitary organization with ties to the New Age movement has come into being, the Guardian Angels. More ominous still are developments that have taken place under the auspices of the United States military. The 1st Earth Battalion, headed by recently retired Lieutenant Colonel James Cannon, who proudly proclaimed he was leading his monk warriors with the Force. The Force. Oh, the Star Wars Force. Is it like the Daniel Force? Oh. Um, this is the men who stare at goats. If you saw that movie, that's what she's talking about. <clears throat> most new age, most important new age organizer organizations have coalesced behind planetary initiative for the world we choose. Planetary initiative with will hold its world congress in Toronto, Canada, on June twenty first, nineteen eighty three, with a simultaneous meeting of the World Council of Wise Persons taking place in New York City at the United Nation at the United National Headquarters. Can you believe there's such a thing? The World Council of Wise Persons with capital letters. However, we Christians must realize that God's timetable takes precedence over the New Ager's timetable. Yes, clearly the times are in God's hands. Nothing can happen, the whole New Age movement notwithstanding, unless he is ready. However, if God is ready, are we ready? It is time for a real soul-searching by all God's people. And that's the end of chapter 4. Thank you for listening. 
or watching. Run. There's just one name that can keep you out of hell, and it's the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus.